day. Hello. Happy morning, everybody. Um, we're going to talk about broke people problems today, okay? As you evolve and, and uh, elevate into new standards of life and living, um, you enter in this stage of new money. And I want us to talk about how you can be operating in a space of higher abundance, attracting clients who are willing and able to pay for your services, um, and to make sure that you can stop attracting broke people. You know, clients who can't pay for you, clients who are always trying to negotiate your rates, clients who are um, signing up for your program, but then, you know, right when things about to start getting on and popping, they start ghosting you. I want us to talk about that today. So edges may be snatched in the, in the process of this live stream today. Um, feelings may get hurt, but that's all right. Why? Because I want us to do better. I want you to do better. I want us to make more money. I want us to live a higher quality of life. But just let me know real quick, like, are you an individual? Do you struggle with attracting clients who can pay for your services? Do you, have you had any challenges with clients sit on the phone so excited to work with you? Um, but then we start talking dollars and cents and talking about commitment and talking about payment, they ghost. Or have you ever dealt with clients who, um, you know, you know that you can help them, but they just don't, like for whatever reason, they do not understand the value and they are like, ah, your services are how much? I don't know. Can I get a discount? Can we barter? Can we negotiate? Like, can I get my cousin Ray Ray to um, do some video production for you so I can get this service for free? Like I've heard it all. And I want us to talk about that really, like I want us to talk about that very honestly um, because when you make this shift that we're going to talk about today, this will automatically, like you'll be able to implement what we're gonna talk about today immediately. And you'll be able to start to position yourself to stop attracting broke people and start attracting clients who can actually afford your services and afford to work with you. So I don't know if you guys are ready or not, but uh, I am. So first thing that you guys have to think about when you are building a business and you are providing a service, um, whether you're selling Facebook ads, whether you're um, doing HR consulting, whether you're a real estate agent, whether you are a hairstylist, a manicurist, um, whether you're a therapist, an accountant, a lawyer, whatever the case is, you have to make like the whole purpose and the sole purpose of your business is to solve someone's problem. OK, and even in that simple sentence, your business exists to solve a problem that people are willing to pay for. And if you are only solving broke people problems, you will only attract broke people. If you are solving basic general problems that typically people with no money have, those are going to be the kind of people that you will consistently attract. So an example of that, what, what I mean by that is, if you are solving like, you know, I'm, I'm helping people um, get their first client, or I'm helping people um, buy their first home, or I'm helping people, uh, pop in the comments and just let me know what business that you're in. Tell me what service that you sell. Um, I'm helping people, uh, you know, the business basics, like how to start your business. If you're helping people with basic things that are big, like very, very entry level or beginner level, that probably means they're not going to have, and this isn't a full blanket statement, but more often than not, you're going to attract people who don't have money. If you're solving basic people problems, hair extensions. I, I love this, Jackie. Somebody said um, she sells hair extensions. If you are selling cheap hair from China and you're trying to sell bundles that are $40, $50, $60 a bundle, you're going to attract cheap people. Because if anybody knows, if you're selling quality hair extensions, if you, like my, I think one of the best hair companies in the country is ND Care. You can't buy a 10-inch bundle from ND Care starts at like $150. So one thing is if you're only solving um, problems that broke people have, you're going to consistently attract broke individuals. And another thing, if you are only selling cheap offers, meaning that the price point of your service is low, in comparison to the perceived value of what it should be, you're going to attract cheap people. So what I mean by that is think about, like I always love using purses. I'm a big, I'm a big person, like shoe fanatic. Um, I really love luxury shoes. But if somebody were to tell me that like, if I want uh, a quality handbag, meaning like a Louis Vuitton or a Chanel purse, 
normally if somebody's buying that caliber of a, a bag, there's all the, the buyer already has a perceived value of that item. Meaning that if I'm going to get top quality leather, if I'm going to get top quality stitching, am I going to get top quality craftsmanship of the product that I'm buying? If the price point doesn't match the perception that I already have of that, something's off. So if somebody tries to sell, sell me a Chanel bag for $200, I'm not even going to bat an eye at it because I know that a quality bag with real leather, with real craftsmanship, with hand stitching, with that level of detail is not going to be that cheap. So a large reason why you are probably attracting broke people, people who cannot afford your services, is a lot of the times because your services are too inexpensive. If you're helping somebody get a radical transformation or if you're helping somebody, um, like, you know, I, I used to run a mastermind program called Go Getter Elite. And that program was specifically designed to help people make six figures, right? To get people over that six figure mark. If I'm selling a program that's going to teach you how to make six figures, that's a radical income shift. And I'm only selling that program for a thousand dollars. There is a disconnect. How can something be producing so much value, such a huge return on my investment, but it's so inexpensive? There, so a lot of the reason why you're attracting broke people primarily is because either you're only solving problems that broke people have, and you your prices may not be reflective of the value that you're saying that you're able to deliver to somebody else. Does that make sense? So if you say you're a web designer, and, and, and um, I know somebody mentioned you know, that here that I help somebody with web design and branding. If you say that you're a web designer and you're going to be, um, if you're trying to make the, the somebody's very first website, you're going to attract broke people, right? Because most of the time, if somebody is in the very beginning stages, they need their first website, they probably don't know what offer they're selling. They probably don't know what type of people they're trying to attract. They don't know their niche. They don't know, even know how to communicate they haven't even validated the thing that they're selling yet by actually selling it consistently and getting consistent results. Versus like if you're trying to make a website for like a Brene Brown or make a website for like a Tony Robbins or make a website for, you know, the upper echelon, like you're gonna attract a different type of caliber of individual. So you wanna make sure you need to get clear on what problem are you solving with the service that you're selling? And is the product, are, a lot of the time, if you are stick, like a lot of the time, the reason why you're attracting broke people is because you individually, you have a broke mindset. And uh, yes, this may, y'all just know that this is, with, this is with love. This is something that I had to work through as well. But if you have a broke mindset, if you have a, a lot of limiting money beliefs around how much money you're allowed to make, around how much money you're allowed to charge, if you are projecting your limiting money beliefs on your potential buyers, saying, oh, somebody won't pay me $1,500 to work with me. Somebody won't pay me $3,000 to help them um, lose their baby fat. Somebody won't pay me X dollar amount to do whatever. If you're the one that you're already filling your mind with these negative thoughts and you're projecting your limiting money beliefs onto your buyers, you will continue to attract broke people. If you have a broke mindset, if you second and guess, or devalue what it means to invest in yourself. Like if you won't hire a coach, if you won't invest in your education, if you won't invest in your learning, if you are constantly second guessing everybody else's rates, you are going like that stuff, it is a mirror. Your clients are a mirror of what your beliefs are of yourself. And I can guarantee that across the board, can almost guarantee it. So like if you have, if you are constantly showing up with this broke mentality, with this broke energy, you will continuously attract those types of people. So I, I, a lot of the time people say, well, Jay, why am I attracting people who won't pay for my services? Why am I attracting people who won't honor contracts? Why am I attracting people who don't operate in self-integrity? Why am I attracting people who don't show up, who don't do the work, who are constantly complaining? My first question is, let's look in the mirror. Michael Jackson had that right. What, how does that song go? Man in the mirror. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Are you that type of individual who makes an investment and you back out the second it gets uncomfortable? Are you the type of person who they enroll in a program and you break the contract? Are you the type of person who will sign up for something and then you don't show up and you quit too soon? You don't do the work until it works. You constantly second guess the process. It is a mirror reflection. So if you want to attract a higher caliber of clientele, you have to evolve to be a higher caliber of clientele.
right? You have to evolve your mindset. You have to evolve your, your ability to process information and to make sure that you're not projecting your limiting beliefs and your self-sabotaging behaviors onto other people, assuming that's how they're going to treat you. You can't do that. But also, you need to solve a bigger problem. So this is why people, when they enroll in services that sell, in module one of, our, of my program, services that sell, we teach you how to package your offer. And one of the ways that we do that is help you evaluate what skill sets do you already have and what results do the skill sets that you already have produce for other people. And the reason why most people get have uh, module one is normally a very tough module for a lot of our students. Because, not because the content is difficult, but it's because we're literally pulling people up to a higher level of deservedness. We are pulling our clientele up into a higher level of believing in themselves at a level that they have not believed in themselves before. So a, lar a large reason for that is because if you want to sell high ticket offers, if you want to sell high end offers, if you want to convert clients at $2,000, $4,000, $9,000, $15,000 a piece, you have to evolve into a different level of being. Right. I'm and and inside of services that sell. That's why our program is not for everybody. If everybody like if, if you're an individual who wants to keep selling low, ch like cheap offers, if you're a type of person who doesn't want to help individuals get a radical transformation, our program is not for you. Why? Because module one, I'm living, I'm literally pulling people up to a different level of identity and a different level of being. A huge reason why is because they've never viewed themselves as somebody who is allowed to make X dollars amount for one client. It literally shifts, uh, for most of our students, it shifts their ability to believe in how much they've been able to earn before. And that's why that module is so difficult because it's not that they aren't capable of producing the results. It's not that they're not capable of helping somebody get a radical transformation. It's their belief in themselves that they're worthy of receiving this and that they're worthy of charging a higher price point. And so yeah, exactly. Monique, Monique is one of our top students right now in the program. She said module one makes you show up for yourself and it does. It calls you to a higher level of being. So, and it also gets you out of the playing field of playing small. The reason why many of us, um, and this was me when I first started my business. So when I'm talking about you, I'm talking like this was me at a former stage, you know, two and a half, almost three years ago. But if you are constantly lowballing your rates, and you know, constantly undercharging yourself, and you're wondering why do I keep attracting broke people? Why do I keep attracting people who can't afford my services? Are you solving a problem that's worth? When I say worth, I mean valued at a higher price point. Or are you are you playing it safe and keeping it safe by saying I'm going to just solve this basic problem? And a huge reason is, and part of the reason how I can, uh, you can kind of self-check right now, am I solving a problem that's for broke people? Am I solving a problem that will attract um, low caliber clientele is if your service is too broad. For example, if you just say I'm a virtual assistant, you will attract broke people, can guarantee it. Even people who have money won't pay you more money because you are a generalist. If you say that I am a, um, you know, if you're trying to attract, like, if you are just, like, if you just say, even I'm just a real estate agent, you will attract such a wide variety of people. People with money, like, so you have to think about this too. People who have money, they have different desires. They have different fears. They have different objectives. They look at their time completely different than broke people look at their time. So if somebody has money, they're not trying to learn how to do this for themselves. Right. If somebody has money, they are looking to hire an expert. They're looking to hire somebody who specializes in the problem that they want solved. Why? Because if somebody who has money, meaning they've gone through education, their level of knowledge has evolved over the years. If they are growing in their business or they're an individual that's making six figures, they've already done some of that self work. Right? They're, they've already invested in themselves. They've read books. They've invested in coaches or therapy or counseling or whatever. Their mindset is at a higher caliber than somebody who was just broke. Right? So those individuals that have money look at things differently. They're not looking for the cheapest way out. They're looking to invest in somebody who actually has a skill set, has the expertise. They want to pay for that. So if somebody comes to me and they're a generalist, I'm not about to pay a generalist top dollar. A large portion of the reason why people with money are willing to pay more is because there is a level of confidence. 
that who they're investing and hiring in has a proven process, has a framework, has a methodology. The person that they're hiring believes in their ability. You get what I'm saying? Broke people don't have that type of mindset. Most broke people are like, well, how can I get the cheapest offer? I'll do it myself. I'll figure it out on my own. That's normally a broke mentality because the people who have money understand the value of their time. And they also understand that they are not about to spend an excess amount of time trying to figure out something on their own. Like, cause they know that in that, in that route, they're actually losing money because they know how much their time is worth and value that from a monetary perspective. Broke people don't have that concept because they don't have money, they have an excess in time. They have time to actually figure that stuff out on their own. But if you are an individual trying to attract a high caliber of clientele and attract a clientele that they can actually afford you, you need to specialize. Like you need to specialize. So even like, you know, we've had multiple people go through services that sell and I'll give some examples. And again, feel free, pop in the comments and let me know what service you sell. And I will right now in live action right now, we will help you specialize it, but you need to specialize your service. And this is why services that sell my program, why people invest in it is because they need help developing what their signature service should be. It, that's their area of expertise. That is the thing they want to be known for. The thing that when they inv get invited to go speak at social media marketing world, why, like why people get asked to speak on those stages because they're experts. How do you establish yourself as an expert and attract people with a uh, more money Specialize your services, right? I wanna hire somebody who has a proven methodology, who has a proven framework. So let me run through some of these examples. Courtney says she's a wedding planner. So if you're just a general wedding planner, I think you will have a difficult time attracting high caliber clientele versus specialize. So instead of saying I'm a wedding planner, maybe she specializes in destination weddings or maybe she specializes in a, a, a local area. Maybe you are the go-to person for Detroit weddings or the go-to person for Atlanta weddings. Or, and then even beyond that, even beyond specializing based off of location, like you could specialize based off of budget. So we specialize in luxury Atlanta weddings for like the 1% in Atlanta. Like you need to specialize your service. Um, and this is very uncomfortable for a lot of people because it's like, oh, if I niche down too far, aren't I excluding people? Yes, you want to exclude people. Everybody should not be for you. Everybody should not be for you. You should not be trying to attract and hire and make everybody want to, to hire you. That's not what it should be. It should be a very clear line saying, this is who I'm for, this is who I'm not for. That needs to be distinct. Um, financial coaching, financial coaching is super broad. Like I have no idea what you're helping people do with financial coaching. Um, people who've gone through services that sell, we've had financial coaches who will fall into the categories of um, one of our financial coaches, Sophia, hit her up if you guys fall into this category and need help with it is she helps uh, corporate professionals who make six figures a year, but don't they don't see the money in their bank account. So a, a huge reason why people hire her is because they want to, um, you know, they, they have the money, they, they make all more than six figures in their corporate job, but they still, like for example, they wanna be able to buy a house. Um, and they will hire her to help save for their down payment for their home. She normally helps them with their credit score, but she offers financial coaches, financial coaching for six figure professionals who reason why they're hiring her is because they want to buy their home and they need help figuring out their money because they know they should have the money, but they don't. Um, she says it, she says that way more succinct than I do, but financial coaching, you need to get way more specific on what that is. Um, somebody says I specialize in new business owners. So one thing here, a big thing that I'm seeing pop up right now in my comments is you guys are telling me what service that you provide, you're not telling me what problem you solve. It doesn't matter if you're a coach, a consultant, a freelancer, if you cannot articulate what problem you solve, because that's really what people are paying for. They're not paying for your service, they're paying for the problem that you solve. And the problem that you solve needs to be specific. Like, otherwise you will keep attracting people who don't wanna pay top dollar for you because you're not presenting yourself as a top dollar uh, candidate to be hired. Somebody said digital marketing strategy, web design. Uh, even if you're doing web design, specialize in web design. Do you specialize in, in Squarespace websites? Do you specialize in WordPress websites? Do you specialize in um, Kajabi websites? Like specialize in what website that you design for your, your clientele, of cal like your people. Maybe you specialize in converting people from Squarespace to WordPress. Like it needs to be that niche. Uh, let me see if some over on Facebook. 
Oh, Lynn has a great one. She says, travel and lifestyle strategists who specialize in family group travel to the Caribbean shoreline of Mexico. So that, that, that is, and I'm not saying that you need to be this niche for forever, but you need to be niche in the beginning. Like if you're making less than six figures a year, you need to be niche because otherwise it's just too difficult for you to go out there and try to convert people when you're not, when you don't even have money to really try to capture everybody anyways. Um, even somebody saying, I hope people, I help women find their purpose. And a lot of the time when we have people come through services that sell, when they talk about life coaching and purpose and confidence, you still need to get specific um, because helping women find their purpose, what does that mean? Like people define purpose so differently from per like from individual to individual. And how do you um, measure whether or not you were able to get somebody that result? Right? Like if you're, I I'm helping people find their purpose, how do you know that, that result has been achieved? So it needs to be that specific, guys. So if you are constantly attracting clients who can't afford your services, I can almost guarantee it's because you're solving a problem that only broke people have and you are not specializing your service enough that somebody who has money would pay you attention, right? Like if you are, if you, and this is just my criteria and this is what criteria, you know, part of it is too, you need like your, and your, it may be your limiting mindset and your limiting beliefs around what people are willing to pay for. So this is why I, I, every program I run, it's in a group environment. Why? Because you may have a low money mindset, but you need to be in an environment with other individuals who also think bigger, who are, who, whose ability to receive is bigger than yours. Because sometimes knowing that somebody else is able to do it gives you belief that you can do it too. This is why all my programs are done in group environments. There's just so much better results that happen all around organically and naturally when we're in a group container. Second, is you have got to up level your ability to like you need to solve a more specific problem it needs to have a specific result it needs to have a proven methodology you need to have a packaged process right because if you have a methodology people are not just investing now in you as the influencer or as the expert they're investing in your intellectual property people are willing to pay more for documented intellectual property like it, somebody said you need more giraffes in the room. If y'all haven't watched the giraffe and turtle thing by TD Jakes, just know we only roll with giraffes over here at Hall Coastal headquarters. Um, but like people are willing to pay for a documented methodology, a documented framework, a documented process. People don't want to just be investing in just you as the, the influencer. That's not scalable. So that's another thing. You need to have a documented process that solves a specific problem and gives people a specific guide to how to get from where they are to where they wanna be. And you need to solve a problem that people with money actually need solved. <laughs> so that's why you need to specialize and niche down, okay? I really hope this is resonating. Um, and I would love for you guys to slide in my DMs, screenshot this video, tag me in what is one takeaway that you can start implementing today. Whether that's, you know, Jay, I need to document my methodology. I need to figure out what my proven process is. Because if you are already dope at the skill, like you already have the skills in you, a lot of the time you just haven't been able to translate that skill into a step-by-step -step process. And I use this example all the time, but it's like my grandmother. When I go over her house and I ask her, Ma, how do you make your peach cobbler? Or how do you make your sweet potato pie? She's like, baby, you just put a little bit of this in there. You put a little bit of this in there. I'm like, Ma, no, 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 no. I need a recipe. I'm willing to pay for the recipe. You need to be selling the recipe. Right. People shouldn't have to hire you and you come over to their house every day for you to be able to make the sweet potato pie. They should be able to buy the recipe and you need to document what your recipe is to get somebody a result. So you either need to figure out how to document your process. You need to figure out what your signature service is going to be. You know, the thing that specializes you, that sets you apart from everybody else, that establishes you as an expert. Um, and then you need to figure out how to sell it. OK, these first two things are just the service. That's what you deliver. That's what people are paying for. But then you need to know how to communicate the value and position yourself in the marketplace so you can sell it consistently. Does that make sense? I hope this is resonating with everybody. Um, and if you need help on this, this is what myself and my team does. This is what my program services that sell offers. So if you need more assistance and you want to chat more about how we can support you in uh, attracting people who can afford your services, helping you charge higher price points, Right. Like if you're constantly charging fifty dollars for a consulting session, three hundred dollars for a coaching package, like you are already playing small. 
I can already tell you, you're playing small and you're solving a small problem. And it's not because you're not capable of solving a bigger, bigger problem. It's probably because you just don't have the framework to set yourself apart and to develop your signature service and to figure out how to sell it. And that's what people come to us for. So if you want more information on that, I highly recommend that you guys just join me inside of my Facebook group. Um, you can visit jerishahawk.com backslash join um, to sign up for that. And we can assist you with figuring out next steps so you can figure out where you need to go so you can stop attracting broke people. Okay? So I hope this was helpful. Feel free to share this video with somebody on your timeline or in your DMs if they need to hear this too. Or if you need to share this with yourself so you can just re-listen to this. Um, but y'all, we got to quit playing small. We got to quit playing small. We got to stop acting like even though your bank account may be broke, your mindset doesn't have to be in poverty state. You have to up-level your ability to receive more. You have to choose and make a decision that's saying, you know what? I'm no longer going to keep operating like this. I'm tired of being broke. <laughs> I know that was me. I was sick and tired. I'm like, there's no way I do not want to be broke. I don't want to have to stress about how my bills are going to get paid next month. I don't want to have to be in the store saying, can I have this or this? I want to live a life of both. Put them both in the bag. Put, ring them both up, please. No, I don't want either or. Jay is taking both of them home, right? And we don't have to be, keep living a life of or. Like, do I, do I invest in this coach or this one? What would be required for you to have both? Do I get to have this bag or this bag? What would be required for you to have both? It's not that you need to save more money. It just means you need to make more money, okay? It's just a shift in mindset. It is a choice that you get to make. It's a choice I made a long time ago. It's a choice I continue to make every day. And it's a choice that I'm hoping to inspire you to make, that you have the capability, you already have the skill set to charge higher price point. You just need a process in place to position yourself to offer a signature service, to document your intellectual property, and to communicate a higher value so you can attract clients who are willing to pay for your services. I don't know if y'all rocking with me, if y'all co-signing to this message today, but I'm, I'm here for the life of both, okay? I'm here for all of the things. I'm, ma'am, I'm at MGM Spa. Do you want the hot stone massage or do you want the facial? You know, ma'am, I want both today. Why? Because I got all the money in my bank account. I'm paying for both. Okay, we are doing a both, a lifestyle of both. Okay, but that starts with you. That starts with you. That starts with you. It starts with your mindset. It starts with your ability to believe that you can operate at a higher level. It starts with your ability to um, I believe that you are worthy at a human level to receive more money, that you are also that you have the capability to operate at a higher caliber. Now, don't get me wrong. If you want to charge more money, more is required of you. Not that you have to give more of your time or give more of your energy, but there's a higher standard of excellence that is required of you. Just flat out. Like if you go to the best surgeons in the world, there is a higher caliber that they are going to show up at. We know that they're getting a continuous education. We know that they are constantly going to classes and getting researching the newest things that are going on in their industry. This is why your leadership team or whatever company you work for gets paid more money. Why? Because they deal with a higher level of responsibility. They are dishing out a higher caliber of results. It doesn't mean that you have to give away your life. It doesn't mean you have to give a thousand percent of your time to your clientele. It's not about how much more you do. It is not that. So more is required of you. So it's just a choice, you know? Like this is why general assistants and admins or, uh, and I'm not knocking that profession, but I'm just saying this is like, just as this the reality of the world that we live in. This is why people get paid more money because they're providing more value. And what is more value? A higher return on the investment a specific problem solved, confidence in your methodology and your process. That is what people are paying for, okay? So it's just, it's just a choice. You just get to choose. Do I want to step into that calling? It's just a choice. It is simply just a choice. You get to make that decision. But for everybody who's down and make that decision, you're trying to be a giraffe running with the other giraffes in the safari, come roll with us. This is the life of both. This is the life of both. When you sit in first class, they ask you, do you want wine or do you want a Coca-Cola? Ma'am, I'm taking both today just because. Just because. I don't even want both. I'm going to give away one of these. That's how much both I want in my life. I want to be able to buy up the whole situation just so I can give it away. Just because I can. 
I, I love that. That to me is freedom. That to me is true freedom of choice. That to me is true financial freedom. When you just get to make the decision on what you want, just because that is financial freedom, freedom, in my opinion, when you get, when you, it's just a choice. When you can make a choice where you can afford both. Like I, I one of my things in my, and then I'm going to let y'all go after this. I'm rambling at this point, but on my vision board, 2016, I had a, uh, uh, a cocaine white Mercedes with peanut butter interior on my board. I got specific. It's like an eighty thousand dollar car with all the uh, they they Mercedes is a mess. They charge you extra money for the peanut butter interior, and they charge you extra money for the cocaine white. It's not actually called cocaine white on the website, so don't go into a Mercedes dealership saying I want the cocaine white Mercedes with the peanut butter interior because that's what Jay told me on her live stream. That's not actually the name of the color on the website, so just don't walk into Mercedes asking for that. But <laughs> um, I wanted that car. And I, I think the reason why I wanted it when I put it on my vision board is because I couldn't afford it. I could not afford it. But when I had enough money to buy it, that was when I realized what freedom was. Because I could afford the car, but I didn't actually want it. I'm like, I don't actually want the car. But I want it to be in a space of financial freedom where I could choose to buy it. And that was the thing to me when I realized what financial freedom was. It's not the actual material things that you get to buy. It's the choice you get to make when making the buying decision. Because now I can't say I can't have that car. I can. I can totally afford that car and not impact the quality of my life whatsoever. But because I'm solving a bigger problem, because I'm, you know, I have a documented methodology and I have a signature service that people hire me to help them with, because the people aren't just hiring me because they love the hot Custle, because they love my curls, because they, they love my melanated skin. They hire me because I, I get people results. Not, and not just me, my methodology, my framework gets people results. Like we're able to help people make significantly more money. But financial freedom is just you being able to have the choice to buy whatever the heck you want. Not because of how much money is in your bank account, not because of some limiting belief that you have, but it's because that to me is freedom. And just know that people with money, they think like that. Like they, they don't want to keep solving broke people problems. They want something specific. They want a documented methodology and that's available for you. And that's also available for the clients that you're able to go help serve in whatever capacity that you're teaching people. Okay. So, okay, I'm done. Rant over. Hawk hustle out. But I really hope this was helpful for you guys today. Um, I really hope this inspires you to make a decision to level up in your business level up in how you serve your clients, level up in how you present your services, level up in what your price points are, right? Don't just throw a higher and don't just throw a higher price tag on a service just like Jay told me I need to raise my rates. You need to also deliver now. You need to get results. You need to have a documented methodology. You need to understand what your position is in the marketplace. And if you need help with that and enroll in services that sell, we will be able to guide you every step of the way. But it's time for y'all like stop acting broke. Stop acting broke. Stop solving broke people problems and stop charging broke people rates. And this, this is, it's a new day, y'all. It's a new day. So be blessed. Stop being broke. God wants you to live an abundant life. Yes, he does. I believe that wholeheartedly. He don't want you to be broke. He wants you to live an abundant life so you can give back to the kingdom in an abundance. So go out here and be abundant, y'all. And I will talk to y'all later. Bye, y'all.